Hello cave dwellers. Regular watchers will know that I've been tearing down a Game Gear recently with a view to turning it into a RetroPie console. And where possible I'd like to reuse some of the existing parts. Although the Game Gear isn't working, it would be a shame to discard the components completely. And today we're interested in one component in particular. It's the Game Gear soundboard. Here's the little fella, so let's pop him out and I'll explain to you why I'd like to use this. The first is for aesthetic reasons. This board obviously fits perfectly and aligns with the holes in the case which means if we can use this no cutting would be required to install a third party soundboard. If we could make this compatible with the Raspberry Pi then the features this brings are this handy volume control knob and then if we turn it round we have a 3.5mm headphone socket. Next to the socket we have the speaker socket which plugs into the speaker that's uh, currently in the front of the Game Gear case. That's the original speaker. But the really nice thing is that when you plug the headphones in, it cuts the speaker. And of course it offers some built-in amplification, just enough to power the speaker and the headphones to a nice volume level. So that's what we're trying to achieve, but the first question is, is it possible? And the answer to that helpfully lies in the service manual. Here we find the diagram for the soundboard, and uh, this bit is the connector. It comprises of six pins, and they are a 5 volt input, the ground cable, right audio, left audio, NC for not connected and SPON for speaker on. At this point the whole idea is a proof of concept so I grabbed my soldering iron and I set out to make a cable to see if it might be possible to uh, feed these inputs from the Raspberry Pi and refinement can come later if it actually works. The idea is to take the left and right audio from the uh, audio output from the Pi obviously and we'll give it a 5 volt and ground input from a USB cable. This then is the uh, Frankenstein cable that I've created and here's a little diagram just to show um, how I've connected that all up. The grounding from the audio cable at this point is taken from the shielding on the cable. Again this would be refined in a longer term solution if we can make this work. The spawn input is not in use. If anyone can explain to me exactly how that was used in the original Game Gear I'd love to hear from you so maybe leave a comment below if you can uh, explain a bit more uh, about that but um, I found I didn't need to use it. Anyway, with the cable made, it was time to plug it in uh, with the audio output and the USB in for the uh, power and, well, let's see what happens. My first test then was with OutRun and the, uh, the built-in speaker. Uh, on plugging it in, there was, um, well, absolutely nothing came out of the speaker, which was disappointing to say the least. No amount of wobbling, fiddling, tweaking, uh, pressing down on cables or capacitors could get anything to come out of this thing. There was, there was just nothing happening. So disheartened I thought I'd try a combination of an iPod and some headphones. The idea being that the iPod might give a louder signal through that we could hear. And the result? Well, I'll let you have a listen for yourself. There was some audio, but um, it was very quiet. And keep in mind these headphones are directly on the camera, so this is as loud as it gets. And mixed in with that audio was the sound of church bells, a uh, cutlery and a cooker timer going off. So uh, that gives you an indication of just how quiet that audio was. Clearly a problem then and I thought the next thing to do was to replace all of the capacitors on the board. Simply because of the age of them, it's always a good idea to swap out capacitors on electronics of this age. Um, just as a precaution anyway. If I was being scientific about it, I might measure each one and just replace the broken one, but there's only five in total, so uh, why the hell not, let's swap them all. And you can take this opportunity to leave a comment about my terrible soldering skills at this point, because yes, I know they're not up to scratch, but uh, they get the job done. So with the capacitors replaced, let's plug it in and see if it's made any difference whatsoever, or if this whole idea is uh, destined to fail. Our first test is connected to the iPod again and with the uh, Game Gear speaker. Let's see what happens. Well that's changed everything as you can hear. The sound is loud and clear, or at least as loud and clear as it can be out of that tiny Game Gear speaker. Uh, we can even turn it up a little bit more. The headphone test next then, do they cut out the speakers and do they play the audio through the headphones nicely? And I'm happy to say they do. 
It's all working brilliantly and uh, I have to say it's much louder than I expected it would be. Unplug the headphones and it goes back to the speakers. Brilliant, this is exactly what we wanted from this. So um, well, let's plug in the Raspberry Pi and just get a feel for how it plays with games. Once again that Frankenstein cable will be trimmed right down for the final version. But here's Sonic on the Game Gear speaker. Followed by some Double Dragon. This being the Mega Drive version. And let's try some Outrun next. In conclusion then, can we use a Game Gear soundboard for our emulation projects? And the answer here is a comprehensive yes. It takes a little bit of soldering, perhaps some capacitor replacement due to the age of the boards, but uh, all in all it's a pretty neat solution that gives you the headphone out, the speaker out and the volume control in a really neat little board. And best of all of course it's completely reversible. If you'd like to watch my progress as I continue to convert a, uh, an old Game Gear into a retro pie, why not subscribe to my channel, like this video and come back for more soon. Thanks for watching Cave Dwellers.